So you also wrote, I don't feel no ways tired. Now, there's not a person that is living that is o under over 50 that don't know that song. <laughs> How did that come about? It was a line. I used to, I just had this one line that said, I don't feel no, I used to hum it on the way to the bus when I would leave work for years. I, that, that's all there was to it. And I was just singing and I never worried about it anymore being added. And then I at a friend of mine's house on Saturday playing his piano. And the rest just came. It was real funny. The whole rest of it just all came from that. So when did you first sing it? How did Reverend Cleveland get it? Oh, he, he was friends with the Lord's Bear Campbell. He used to come here. They used to sing it all the time because I worked with them. So you taught it to who? To the Lord's Bear Campbell. And the Bears, I'm, I'm very happy that he used my music, so I'm I'm very glad of it. So what did you what did you feel like the first time you heard it? Let's but say on the radio. I, I was happy to hear it, but um, I, it, it made me feel good. I didn't know it was going to do with all that it did, but the first time I heard it, I saw something. Country, something. I, I was blessed then. I never will forget it. 19 se September, 1976, I started playing with James Cleveland. And of course, you all knew in 1978, we recorded, uh, um, I Don't Feel Always Tired, uh, that we recorded live in um, Omaha, Nebraska. And uh, it's so amazing how uh, God opens up doors that you don't realize he done done it. I was sitting on the organ, and the thing about it is, the night before we recorded, my father passed. He called me to the phone, and back then we had phones in the lobby, pay phones. They were saying back in this day, we um, they called me. I went to the phone and, they, and my, mom, my mother said, "Keith, your dad died." We know he was he was real sick. I went back to the organ, played, and we sung it, and they got happy. I never even at live, but the next night, which was a Friday night, uh, church was packed. Salem Baptist Church. They put people stand all around the walls. And he looked at me and said, sing it for me, Keith. Now, I'm so busy playing, right, because, you know, one thing about James Cleveland and I admire, we had to watch him. You know, I could not overstep the piano. The piano was the lead. These folks nowadays don't really know about that. The piano is the leading instrument. The organ accompanied, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm playing, and he looked over at me and said, sing it for me, Keith. And I came out then, and then the Lord just took me from there, but it goes to show you, and, 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 I, and I'm encouraging those that are sitting in the background, not doing anything, pray about it. And if that's God's plan for you, whatever it is, he'll, he'll open that door. <laughs> don't try to figure out, don't try to plan it. It, it wasn't planned. I never would have thought that I don't feel like this time would be one of, the, one of the greatest hits. And we used to get on the pro, we used to get to programs, and when we sung it, I saw an organ, but then I start getting off the organ and, 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 and walking down the aisle singing it. Then James said, okay, now you're doing too much. <laughs> He's dead now, so I can talk about him. I love him to death. So he started pulling me back. One time I was on the floor, and I was singing the folk were going in, so he, he ended his song. And I turned around looking at him, I said, you know, they laughed, they were laughing. But, but but I thank God for that. I thank God for that because he did give me a chance.